start recording and you guys everybody can see my screen yes. so i'm in canvas and then you know here's canvas so basically we're gonna go there courses we are looking in at for spring 2022 and we have here announcement and we have syllabus and we have modules. So how are we gonna work? First of all, um, it's my pleasure to talk to you guys today. And I hope that you guys have a great uh, winter break and I'm looking forward to meeting you in person shortly after the period of time passed with the, with the constructed uh, limitation we have on campus due to the pandemic. I believe everything will, uh, will go well that you know we should return it by by February 12th, right? You guys know this, right? That's based on the provost and the president of the university policy came from the governor of California. Okay. So this course, any message I would like to convey to you, it will be through the announcements until the until the lab uh, announcement section for Canvas. In the top of that, that I already created a Slack channel, Slack channel, and I invited all of you guys to the Slack channel. Did you guys get the invitation? Yeah. Great. So here, the I know some of you guys taking the course with me, and some uh, some of you guys are taking with other professors. So that's why I keep repeating. So anyway, so here the Slack open. What is Slack actually used for? So if there is a message, it's immediate stuff that you guys would love to discuss with, you just put it on the Slack. So everybody will be able to see it, right? So everybody will get benefit of the discussions on the Slack. So here is, you know, 3300 the Spring Lab. I asked you guys in the previous announcement to give me the username for the, for the, for the for the github and you guys already have done it which is appreciated thank you and then you know in the top of that i think i made i sent the message that i would be late i don't know i think i sent it in a wrong instruction but you know it's supposed to be here so anything you guys would like to write here you write it you say that you know here he adds you put my name or whatever you would like to direct message to him and then you know or you would like to like you know here you say that oh then you mix that. Right, and then you know you just do like this, then you know you make enter. And then you know it will direct message to him and so on. Anyway, uh, back to the announcement. So the uh, every week there will be announcement unless there is something else I would like you guys to do. Then you know I will go ahead and send another one. Uh, what I would recommend. Uh, in the other courses I'm teaching, I asked one of you guys to volunteer of creating uh, a Google document. And in that Google document, you guys will uh, list a groups and every single group would have number of members. And you guys would select who's gonna be your partner. Because, you know, since I work for Capone, I found out some of you guys prefer that I assign the group some of you guys feel comfortable to work with a partner or somebody you know and so on so i prefer you guys to choose by your own so then you know it would be more flexible or you feel more comfortable while you're working uh, in the lab for the rest of the semester that makes sense so if one of you guys can like share with us a google document now and add it on the chat that would be great so you guys start sorting and uh, based on the statistics of the course, uh, if you look into the CBT, how many students we have in the class so far? I don't know why internet is based on what. Uh, faculty center. So we have 29, we 
have 29 participants in the in the lab okay and uh, basically you know what you can do we can divide every group can have two every group can have two members okay and then you know by by the end of the time of the add and the drop period we might I have you know have extra extra students and see what will happen okay so so are you adding people from the wait list i should add one I, I might add one okay so it'll be third okay so yes so i appreciate it thank you so your colleague already has the link here for the google document right unless more people actually drop right so i can add more you know, i mean but then i think the add and drop period when it will end you guys have the, the date for it february 4th yes not yeah so we have some time so there is some chances some people can be able to test so here you know you add your group say group a for instance and you put number of members you put your name and two parentheses and you put in the middle your github username sounds good so group then under the group the one two one is going to be a member two parentheses you put your github username second guy will do the same thing with his github username sounds good then i will collect this information and i will create a github link for every single group why you will need it because you will load all the materials of every single lab that you are participating here so that will be easy for me to give you the grade so normally my grade for the lab oh so the link is not working uh, i cannot work uh, Somebody can make a new one, that's fine. No, 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 it is good, but you, I think you need to make it editable. What you have, you can edit it, but you, you know, other cannot edit, right? That's correct. Maybe Gerard, can you make one? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so this is how it works. So basically, you know, now I put the syllabus uh, here. And under modules, I will be putting the materials for every single lab assignment. So it's gonna be week one assignment, week two assignment, week three assignment, right? This week we don't have a really a lab. That's why you know we're gonna have a short meeting. I will just go through the syllabus with you if you have any questions. And we need you need to buy the board associated with the course. Sounds good. And every single member has to buy. I think Jared already created one. Thank you, Jared, for that. I appreciate it. So you guys can see it on the shared screen, right? This is the link that Jared already created. Okay. So anyway, let's go through the syllabus and then you know how we're gonna be handled this course and how we can get your grade and so on. So this this actually lab is for the digital circuit design using Verilog. Pretty much. If you are very strong in 2300, the digital logic, then you will be doing great in this uh, lab, uh, lab uh, activities. Why? Because, you know, taking sequential, combinational, flip flops, you know, counters, registers, and building with these little pieces with the syntax of Verilog you are learning from the 3300, uh, that will go directly into the chip for the FPGA. So this course will allow you to implement and design and verify and running simulation for combinational circuits, sequential circuit, uh, modeling flip-flops, modeling registers, and modeling higher than uh, flip-flops and registers by combining them. And you will be able to run complicated systems like GPU, CPU, um, timers, vending machines, whatever, based on the accumulated information you have from the 2300 and the 7300 from the syntax perspective of the language. To be allowed to attend this course, you at least have to have the 2300 and the lab pass. And the concurrent is the 3300 itself. It's not 7300 lab, sorry, that's a fine.
Okay, so normally we're gonna have the lab on Wednesday. So while we are in the quarantine or you know in a virtual mood, right? Everything will be based on Zoom, right? But after that, you guys will have dedicated room to do the work on it, which is I think five or seven, I believe, which is in a building nine. The school. Okay, information about my Zoom. The link you guys already know with and the password associated with it and myself for the people who do who don't know me i am professor muhammad ali my name is actually hadith so professor muhammad hadith between you as they call me ali and uh, my office is located in building nine room 131 131 uh, and i'm assistant professor at the ec department here at Catholic. And a scientist for uh, University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, and a researcher for the U.S. Air Force and NASA. My office hours Monday, Wednesday, five thirty to seven thirty. So, beside the slide, you are welcome to reserve or book a slot of time uh, for the office hours through Calendly. So, this is link will allow you to look into how much time you have within this two hours so we can meet and then you know visit that you will register yourself then you know i will meet you in person or even you know on zoom i dedicated 15 minutes for every single student so you will have enough time to address all of the concerns you have so i will do my best on answering and solving problems in your facing next book basically you know you guys are taking 700 so you know Materials for CFS 300 you are learning is fair enough. Advice, internet is full of materials. Digital logic, it's like, you know, have been saturated in research for generation after generation. So you will find a ton of infinity materials shared in internet regarding the digital logic. Design. But if you are a really systematic person, really like to look in a book and read, so one of the three books will be fair enough for you to master the, the topic. So one of them is basically digital system design using Verilog for uh, Charlotte Roth and the other one for one of the geeks for the teaching material for digital logic. His name is Stephen Brown and the book is called Fundamental of Digital Logic Design, Verilog and How to Description Language. And of course, the, my colleague here in the ECA department, uh, Dr. Rafiq Zaman, he has also one of really nice uh, book, which is uh, publisher Wiley, and the topics of digital logic and microcontroller and the current edition in that issue. Which one I frankly speaking really like, I love all of them. You know, I love beyond all of them, but you know, I feel more lean to Stephen Brown because he's like, you know, one of the top guys in the nation. And of course, Charlotte, Charles Roth also, his book is really good, especially with timing and circuits. This more into design and uh, strategies on design. The board we are using. So there is a national uh, semiconductor crisis due to the pandemic issues and you know the supply chain issues. Everybody aware of it, right? Yeah. So that's why do your best of finding the board. No matter you're gonna buy it, already have been used with somebody, or, uh, or whatever. Right? I mean, there is actually um, a Nexus Four DDR. This is the older version, the obsolete version of uh, what we are using on Canvas. But frankly speaking, it will do the job. Okay, because you know the whole entire idea of the board for those people who didn't attend my core my, my lecture on Monday, the board is a PCB board. It's just hosting the chip, which is the uh, Zymex Arctic Seven. This Arctic Seven has multiple versions multiple version based on the packaging so you know you will find somebody telling you it's called a 700 t somebody will tell you oh, there is another one 50 50 t somebody will tell you oh, what 20 whatever right so those all coming from the same family all of them appreciated all of them can be used. whatever you can find in front of you get it especially with these days right so which one i frankly recommend because you know this board will stuck with you for 4300, 4305, 4304, and uh, beyond that, if you are doing master or PhD. 
So normally people look for the biggest size chip. So if there is one 50, A750, and there is one A, A700, e, you will find out 100 is bigger in size, has more resources on the chip. So people who work with like, you know, system Verilog and system level for 4305 will be happy with you. But you know, 50, they might have some limitation on the resources. So it might be a problematic for you. Make sense? But for 6300 at the moment, Nexus 4 DDR work, Nexus 4 A750 work, Nexus uh, A700 is work. And I think somebody told me from the 6300, A700 is available in internet. Correct me, guys, if I'm wrong. Have you guys did already study about that? Hello. Anybody's here? Hello. Yes. Okay. So have you guys look into that? Can you repeat that, please? Which part exactly? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So uh, Brian replied. Yes. Nexus A seven hundred T is on. Uh, you will find it. There is decent numbers. So, and even there is academic pricing. So it will end up not being 200, 300. Because, you know, there is people actually using the, using the board they have in the blood market, which is bad. So the prices go like crazy. You know what I mean? So I, I saw yesterday one of people selling on Amazon for $400. What the heck? It's not even worse. So, you know, get it as soon as possible. It's better for you to have it by next week is it possible. Okay, just give me updated on the slide and say you receive it. Okay, okay. now how are we gonna uh, uh, evaluate your uh, evaluate your progress in the course, right? Or the lab? And we have fifteen weeks. Literally, this week is off, and we have week break, right? Sixteen weeks will be a week off, and this week is over. So we literally we have fourteen, right? I already gave you 10 lab assignments, 10 lab assignments, but we have 14 weeks. Sometime maybe the lab will need one more week to think about it, to work with it. Sometimes, you know, we will need to do some experiment extra. So that's why those couple of weeks, I put it for what? Flexibility, okay? Anyway, so the grade level, it's a weighted accumulated system. So basically you will find lab one has the same weight of lab 10, 10% of the whole entire grade, right? If I increase number of labs, then still I will take the highest 10. That makes sense to everybody? They say that, you know, I decided to make it lab to 11, right? Then I will pick the highest 10 out of your grade and I will give it to you. Let's say that I decided to make 12 labs. Then, you know, the highest, tens out of 12 will be mitigated in your final grade. Sounds reasonable to everybody? Yes. Okay. You need to be sure that you know you are submit something, right? Otherwise, how I'm gonna evaluate you. The grade itself of the lab, how I'm gonna evaluate? Based on three parts. What is the three parts? The report, 25%. This report is going to be describing the circuits, problem you, uh, you faced, how did you uh, distribute the work with your partner, stuff like that. 20 out of 5%, it will be based on questions and uh, communication while I'm asking you questions. And 50%, it will be about the prototype is working, which, you know, if it's, you know, if we are in the campus, you're going to show it to me if we're going to be. Uh, Safety issues, you're gonna make like a recorded video and you will be recording it, show to me working and performing some test cases running on the board. That would be 50% of every single lab assigned. So is it clear now? 50% on demo running, 25% on the workload on the report and how you actually writing the report. I will show you one of my uh, previous labs uh, reports so you guys will follow the footsteps, okay? if you are confused about how we're gonna make a lab report. Sounds good? 
and 25% it will be about you know communicating and talking to me sharing codes asking you some question about the code open your code show me what how did you do stuff like that. okay how is the grade will be distributed to distinguish what is your grade in letter so unfortunately if you are below 61% you consider f and frankly speaking everybody passed with me with good grade you know D minus, you are considered between 64% to 61%. A is 94% to 100%. If you got 94%, you are A. If you got like, you know, 93 points something, you are A minus. So, what topics are we going to be covering in this lab? Basically, whatever you are learning in the course, we're going to practice with experiments in the lab. Just to make it very clear, just formalities, I will really let you know what is the sentence. You know, uh, what is the what is the digital logic we learn? We learn what? Huh? We learn gates, right? So we're gonna be having some experiments about gates, equivalency, and changing from one to the other. We figure out gates is a problematic if we are like designing a big design. So we combine them in combinational circuit. So we're gonna test something about some combinational circuit. Then, you know, we add the time aspect into the combinational circuit in a periodic way, which is a clock. So we are going to build what something in sequential circuit. We grabbing and clustering element for sequential circuit or something for registers, you know, adding uh, previous to the next time uh, perception of the register. I mean, we're going to test counters, you know, clustering the registers together with the memory. You know, uh, combining this together into combinational circuit, we can access finite state machine. And then, you know, that will be used for also building something useful in terms of application, like lightweight, um, lightweight uh, traffic light controllers, uh, testing timing circuit and real time and re uh, reaction time, like setup time, whole time, uh, clock skew, maximum clock. All of this will be realizing while we are doing the real implementation. We have time, we start combining those registers with CPU stuff like that to build more complicated systems like CPUs and you know frequency meters, periodic meters. In my course, I'm teaching communication protocols. Like what? VGA, how VGA work? How can we send some data to the VGA? Then it will be posted on the on the screen. That can be also tested in one of our labs also um uart how can you send streaming of data through the uart communication protocol to the fpga to be processing this data and send it back to the computers it can be also something in my course i will be covering of course not the lab but of course we'll be realizing this in the lab so those people don't have the materials for this uh, taking the course with somebody else still i will share this information in my lab assignment so you can figure out easily how to do this. Uh, Ethernet, VGA, PMOD systems, uh, RX transmitting and receiving, all of this will be handled by this uh, lab at Windows. Reminding you and reminding myself that cheating is not really great approach to pass this course. Because you know, you might lie to yourself and get a, but in reality, when you will go face the real life, you will struggle. And that can cause you to be fired or some bad consequences. I really don't want you guys to be in this situation. So I'm reminding you and reminding even myself in everyday life to avoid cheating. Be sure that you spend enough amount of time to learn and gain experience and knowledge that will help you for future uh, job searching and even you know for your job career in general reminding you also unfortunately as a, one of the tools i have as a professor if i find any cheating happening there will be action be taken into the consideration and hopefully i'm not going to use it if you have some issues, some problems, you know, some uh, personal issues that you would like to uh, expose with me and discuss it with me, 
feel free. We are one family and I'm here to support and help you as much as I can. Sounds good to everybody? Yes. Okay. Now, what is my advice to you as this week zero for us? My advice to you is to install Vivado, which is the tool that we're gonna use for our experiments. Let me tell you my, my bad experience with Vivado. So then you guys will not be in trouble, okay? Vivado, if you open here the, uh, by the way, this video is recorded. So gonna be also posted on under week one module under modules on the campus, okay? So don't worry, you can rewatch many times. So if I search here in Google and write Vivado down, so you'll find here the link, right? Everybody can see the link? I open it. Yeah. So historically, Xilinx started in 1984, 85, something like that. They were using a software called uh, ISE. And that was running up to 2014. Then it became an obsolete tool as uh, Xilinx adopted a startup company developed by UCLA professor Jason Kong, who developed uh, a kind of a very smart software he called it Vivad. Then Officially, it became a part of uh, Xilinx and sp supporting all of their chips activities. So, if you look here, there is ISE what archive, and if you click on it, you will find the highest end 14.7. And that's basically used for an old version of a chips, which is called a Spartan Vertex 2, Vertex 2 Pro, Vertex 3, Vertex 4, Vertex 5 Pro. Some of them are still used till now in a space technology by NASA because those type of chips are red hardened. That means they can tolerate the radiation after you send them out in the space. That's good. So that means even if it's obsolete, still people are using it. Now, they move into the era of Vivado that I'm clicking in front of you, right? Every single version of Vivado since 2012 up, right? Those guys have issues have been fixed by the newer version. But as every software we have in the world, right? When you go ahead and start using the software, you will face a problem of upgrading your computer requirements, right? you will end up having, oh, I need more memory. Oh, I need more hard drive. You know what? I need faster CPU and so on, right? Not everybody has the high-end computer. That's not shame, right? This is reality. This is just life, right? You guys agree? If we are on campus, I think the university allowing you to use the computers and software already deployed there and everybody happy, right? But also in reality, because you're already also overwhelmed with other courses, sometimes you would like to work on what? On your own, own personal computer. Do you guys agree? So my advice, my advice, I use, uh, uh, yes, I applied for academic pricing and that's all. Oh, when, uh, oh that's good. You got a proof, so you know, you know the problem. Anyway. So my advice, use something not really high end, like 2020.3 or 2021.1 or 2021.2. Those guys are graded for machine learning. So they need more memory. They need more hard drive. So for instance, in installing 2021.2, just to get the compressed file uh, downloaded from the internet is 71.6 gigabytes. Would you imagine? Imagine that you will extract it. That will be a several, what, hundred of gigabytes. Not everybody has a computer can handle this, right? Decently, I use it 218.1, this one. And you know, you have here a version for Webpack, and that Webpack, honestly, it's the one have free license. 
So since you guys have your students, Xilinx made a limited version of their Vivado that will be supporting the students' activities and studies in United States and the LA of United States, you know. So Webpac doesn't need license, but there are some others need license and they're really high-end technology. I use them, they give me the license. The license is very expensive. It's like a $10,000 per license or something like that. Okay, so this, the versions you would like to download. So I, I'm not sure, are all of you guys gonna use Windows operating system or some of you guys will use Linux? What is the deal? Are you guys in favor of what? Windows. So Taylor, you were saying something I didn't hear. I cannot hear you, Taylor. Can you write it down if you want? Okay. So frankly speaking, just like honest advice, okay? Windows is great to pass, but real life is Linux, okay? Real life. So are you guys taking this course to pass or to take this course to learn something to go industry? Which way? To pass, Windows is uh, fair enough. You know, uh, I use Linux normally, okay? But there is no problem, you know, we can we can go ahead for the Windows, that's fine too. Okay, so you can download the version of Windows and install it. it, should be working fine. And you will find millions of video on the YouTube telling you if there is any problem, like, you know, missing libraries and stuff like that, how can you handle it, and it will work. So, so far, we understand, right? If we have a very strong, if we have a very, very strong machines, we can go up to 2021.3, .20, but if we don't have, 2018.1 is perfectly fair enough and it's still working. Somebody will ask me, which one is supporting the A7, right? All of them support A7 because A7 is based on Artix family. Artix family is supported by any event. Any questions so far? Okay, so now, what is the assignment for you today? One, order as soon as possible the board. Two, work on installing Vivado Webpack, the one which is a free uh, version license on your machine based on the machine specification you have, you can choose any version of Vivado to be installed there. Once it's done, we have both of them together from next week, we're gonna start having experiments. How gonna work? I'm gonna write the experiments, I recorded video for it, and I share this with you. When we will be on, uh, on campus, you can work with the lab for it. So let's say week number one, I will share some information about the experiment. So I have one week to the next lab to show me the, the demo and the report and everything. Then you know the following week, on Monday, you will, I will be releasing the second, the new experiment, and so on and so on and so on. So going to be in a pipeline uh, fashion. Is it clear to everybody? Yeah. Do you guys have any question or any concern or any anything and anything? Uh, professor? Yes, sir. When it comes to ordering the, uh, the board, would you want one per group or... No, it should be every single member have its own board. Okay. Okay. Because, you know, also you need to learn doing the stuff by hand. Because don't forget, we are Polytech University, right? Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. You guys have any other questions? I see really good activities of you guys writing new names and so on. So, um, uh, uh, by the time of like before the atom drop, at least we will know who gonna go with who. And then, you know, I will start creating by this weekend the, the groups and GitHub and I start sending information. Is there is a Mac alternative to Vivado we could use? Unfortunately, uh, Apple had, I will tell you something, Vivado requires us all of this FPGA 
can be used in military application. Apple, they already have their own, uh, uh, how to say, data management system saying that we cannot use any software supporting ARM. So that's why, you know, Mac will not be really in a good shape with the run. But there is a trick, right? You can install uh, like dual boots, uh, you know, a Linux, but then, you know, the Linux on Mac is really a big mess and would come the problem the problem tailored that you know uh the weather is really heavy very heavy so virtual memory might be crashing a lot with you because it's it's need a lot of memory because it's using numerical solution modeling for finding the best routing between the components on the chip okay Yes, true. I mean, M1, if you have the high end Mac, M1, it's crazy. It's support all stuff. Oh, one of the things that actually I would like to share with you also, if you look into the historical part of Vivado, you will find out that, you know, the new end Vivado 2021.2 is supporting IPs for machine learning on chip. For those people who really like to use, uh, learn some flavor of machine learning on FPGAs. But this is really beyond surface level. But you know, I do a lot of research on this. If you if you like, if you're interested to expose some of these designs on it. Okay. Sounds good to everybody. Do you guys have any questions? Do you guys have any concern? Do you guys have any problem? No questions, Professor. Okay. Super. So in that case, I can say it was my pleasure to talk to you today. Uh, I apologize for being late a little bit due to the difficulties with internet. And also this problem with Java runtime you know, problem. Hopefully the, you know, the IT will work on the level that they, they will fix it to be more efficient. Uh, as, I pro as, I, um, as I recommend everybody, please look, look to the link that you know, Jared already um, shared with us look carefully about how you're going to be allocated in the groups and for the one who will be by himself uh, maybe by tonight I will see if I can add one more person or something into the group so that will be easy. That makes sense. And um, everything will be shared with you about the groups on GitHub once you know the final list uh, of groups will be finalized. Okay, what you, what you need to bring with you next time one, your board to be ready with you. In Slack, you can put the status to everybody said that I ship the board or you know the board on time, you know it's coming in this time and so on. And inform me from time, you know, about this on Slack. And on the top of that, you know, you will work on uh, installing Vivado on no matter what version on your computers, you will be able to start playing with uh, with the course requirements over there for this time. What I recommend, as I said, 2018.1 would be fair enough for whatever we are doing. But if you would like to go higher than that, it's up to you. Okay. Any question? No question? Okay. So thanks a lot, guys. Copy of recorded video will be posted under the modules week number one. And also the copy of the PDF of the syllabus also will be under module called syllabus, even though that I already had it as a HTML syllabus under the syllabus uh, link of the course. Thanks a lot. And it was my pleasure to talk to you. I'll see you on the coming Wednesday. Thank you. Stay Professor, safe, okay? Thank you. Professor? Yes. I have a question really quick. So um, I just want to confirm what's going to happen with the waylist, just because like if I buy the boar and I don't make the class, you know? No, no, I fully understand. Yeah, what, you know, as I said, you know, uh, I need 30. Now I have 29. I don't know who else will be dropping. You know, if somebody drop, I will take two more. If, you know, nobody drop, I will take one more. Because from the Google Docs, it's, it's we're only 14 29. groups. So that means we're 28 people. And I'm, I actually put my name there already. So I don't know if we are actually 29. Uh, maybe somebody didn't come. I don't know. Because, oh, you know, I, I'm, 
I'm not on the, I'm looking at the doc right now and I think all the groups are filled and I'm the only oh. person that hasn't found a partner yet. Okay. You could join group, oh, where is he at? Uh, I was gonna put my name on the on the on the dock. Um, hey guys, make sense? Yes. Okay. So, so within when? within when within one or two days, I will figure out what's going on, right? Because okay. of course, it depends on the people's schedule. Maybe some people will drop, some people will not. You know what I mean? Okay. Because um for your lecture um I somehow are, are, you, are you in my lecture? Well, I, I somehow got into it today. I got an email saying that I was enrolled in your class, but I wasn't the waitlist on Monday. So I don't know if somebody dropped or I don't know maybe what happened. Somebody, maybe somebody dropped. That's why. Yeah. Yes, which is good, right? Yeah. So if you so are, I'm just then waiting I, for this class. Yeah. So you know, stay as a last person, and I will give you uh, something. Okay. Okay. Thank you.